Chief Meteorologist Patrick Powell. Severe weather index in the low category for the next 24 hours. We'll see partly cloudy skies during the day tomorrow. Details coming up on Fox 11. First on Tuesday's Fox 11 News at 5. State election officials still have not posted the recall petitions against the governor online. We'll have balanced coverage of the decision and the concern. A shed fire closing down part of a major highway in Manitowoc County. School employees in Antigo are charged with buying and selling drugs. Accusations on special assignment. And voters in Florida right now with their chance to influence which Republican may challenge the president in November. Your station for balanced news and severe weather coverage. This is Fox 11 News at 5. Good evening, everyone. We continue to dig for answers this evening about when or if the Government Accountability Board is going to post online those recall petitions against Governor Walker. Now, those petitions were supposed to be posted yesterday, but early last night, the group announced that the postings were going to be delayed indefinitely. The board claims that domestic violence victims have expressed concern about their names and addresses being released. Fox 11's Kelly Schlicht is live for us in Madison tonight with the latest. Kelly? Michelle and Tom, the Government Accountability Board says it has not yet reached a decision on whether the publication online of those signatures is a violation of people's privacy. The GAB and the Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen said today that this will not slow down the timeline, however, for verifying or challenging those recall signatures. Tonight, we have balanced coverage. State Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen said in a press conference today that it's up to the Government Accountability Board to make the determination on whether to publish the more than a million signatures and addresses on petitions to recall Governor Walker. Um, the Government Accountability Board is going to be the ones who make that determination. I, I can tell you that I know of nothing in the law that requires them to post them online at all. Uh, saying that the law requires them uh, to be turned over as public records does not mean that that's the manner in which they have to turn them over. The petitions to recall four Republican state senators were published by the GAB last week. Republicans say the information gathered on all recall petitions against the governor is already available to the public, even if it's not online. These are a matter of public record, the same way that uh, you can go to the public library and uh, look at somebody's voter registration status. Again, uh, personal information is posted on campaign finance reports. Again, the issue is, this is what's been done in every recall election in the past. Uh, recall petitions are a matter of public record. Democrats and Republicans both both say they understand the Government Accountability Board has the responsibility to disclose the information as public record, and doing so online might be the most cost and time effective way of getting that information out. However, Democrats say in politically contentious times, some people who sign petitions may be concerned about their safety. Uh, whether or not that represents a threat to their safety, it's not for me to say, but those concerns are very valid and they should be looked at very carefully. The Government Accountability Board said it would not comment further until a decision has been reached. However, if individuals who have signed petitions have concerns, they can contact the GAB. The Attorney General said while his office has the power to use legal action against the GAB, it does not plan on doing so at this point. Live in Madison, Kelly Schlicht, Fox 11 News. Firefighters have just left the scene of a shed fire in rural Manitowoc County. This afternoon, three fire departments were called to the scene along Highway 151 one west of Valders. Officials have closed off part of that highway. However, that has just reopened. Fox 11's Beth Jones joins us now live with the latest. Michelle, the property you see behind me was where the fire was earlier today and just a few minutes ago, crews officially cleared the scene, but they were out here for about four and a half hours battling a fire that started in a machine shed. Officials say an older gentleman lives on the property but was not home at the time of the fire. A neighbor reported the blaze this afternoon after seeing smoke. Crews had to call in plows to clear out the driveway just to get to the fire. Officials say some chemical tanks in the building exploded before fire crews reached the scene. Authorities say the property owner did machine repair. Although the building is considered a total loss, the fire chief says the delay getting to the fire was a blessing. So we couldn't get in. So we had to wait for the county, Mantle County, to get in there with a greeter, plowed, then we could get in with our trucks before we could do anything, which probably was a good thing and that way nobody got hurt. Now, officials say the house on the property was not damaged in the fire, and at this point, they don't know what caused it. Live in Manitowoc County, Beth Jones, Fox 11 News. 
Imagine learning that your child's principal or football coach was busted for marijuana. And imagine that same man giving marijuana to his friends, some of whom are teachers. Well, as we've reported, that's exactly what's been happening in Antigo. Tonight, Fox 11 on special assignment takes a look at a drug investigation that is sending shockwaves through the Antigo community. Here's Robert Hornacek. Antigo has a certain small town feel, but this community an hour and a half northwest of Green Bay is facing some big problems. I guess it took everybody by shot. A high school football coach who works as an elementary school principal was arrested on marijuana charges. So was a recently retired special education teacher. And that's not all. According to court documents, four men who work for the Antigo School District, including three teachers, admitted to buying or using marijuana. They're now on paid leave. I get a lot of people saying, boy, what's going on in Antigo? The sheriff says he's never been part of a drug investigation like this before, and it's just the beginning. And it's not over by any means? No, not, and not even close to being over. It all started in August of 2011. The Antigo High School football team under head coach John Lund was gearing up for another season. That same month, a tip came into the Langlade County Sheriff's Office. The tip sparked a massive marijuana investigation that has led to dozens of criminal charges, three arrests, and the suspension of five Antigo educators. When you look at the uh, positions that these people held in the community, I think it's a very significant um, impact and importance uh, in this case. The most high profile arrest was of that football coach, John Lund. He now faces eight marijuana related felonies. Lund is also the principal at West Elementary School and Pleasant View Elementary School. According to the criminal complaint on November 30th, an investigator interviewed Lund at one of his schools. Lund admitted that he obtained four one ounce bags of marijuana from his brother in law. Lund says a few days later, he gave two bags of marijuana to his friend and fellow football coach, Scott Peterson. Peterson, who spent 23 years in the Antigo School District and just retired from his job as a special education teacher in June, now faces 26 drug charges. According to the complaint, Peterson admitted to buying about 15 pounds of marijuana over the past five years from a man named John Hunter. No charges have been filed against Hunter, and Fox 11 was not able to contact him. Peterson also admitted to selling marijuana to his friends for five years. Investigators say Lund admitted that in the last three years, he has delivered marijuana to his friends about three to four times. Lund's brother-in-law, Bradley Maz, is facing three felony drug charges. In the complaint, Maz said he would deliver marijuana to Lund about once a month and get 200 to $250 per ounce. We tried to talk with all of the men charged, but they never returned our calls. Sheriff Bill Greening says there's no evidence any drug activity took place in any schools or involved any students. And while this is not your average drug ring, the sheriff says it is serious. Some people compare the effects of marijuana to alcohol and that it's no different than, than drinking alcohol. And my response to that is the big difference is marijuana is illegal. And whether, whether or not you agree that marijuana should be legal or illegal, the fact remains that it's illegal. And the people involved in this case all are educated people. They all know that marijuana is an illegal uh, substance, and they all chose, or allegedly chose, to deal in uh, illegal activities involving marijuana. So who are the men accused of providing marijuana to? The sheriff says people they knew, including fellow teachers. Four people named in the criminal complaint are now on paid administrative leave from the Antigo School District. According to the complaint, Joe Adams, a special education teacher at the high school for 23 years, told an investigator he smokes dope on the weekends. He also said Lund has a big July 4th party composed of people he teaches with, and Lund provides marijuana, which is smoked at his house. Mark Incha, who has spent 22 years as a special education teacher at Antigo High, admitted to getting a gram or two of marijuana from Peterson. Jeff Newfeld, the director of the Aquatic Center, also admitted buying marijuana in an interview with investigators. And Dan Whitman, a gym teacher at East and North Elementary Schools, at first said he never smoked marijuana, but later admitted to smoking it in Madison and while ice fishing. We tried to contact all of the men on paid leave, but they never returned our calls. The sheriff says everyone in town should learn from the case. We're all human. Um, everybody makes mistakes, but that uh, we need to learn from our mistakes and we need to hold people accountable when they do 
break the law. The sheriff says one of the things that makes this investigation so difficult is the fact that Lund and many other people named in the criminal complaint have been in Anago for so many years and they're so well known in this community. In fact, that's why many people here are so surprised at the charges. These are we're good people in our community who did a lot of positive things in the community. Bill Brandt is the mayor of Anago. He's also the former police chief. It's illegal. Uh, you know, these people did something wrong. Brandt's feelings can be summed up with one word, disappointing. It makes it more disappointing that uh, they're, they're involved in, in these things that uh, probably started in college days and and they probably should have grown out of by now, but, but it didn't, and, and uh, people make mistakes, and they'll, I'm sure, pay a price for that, and, and uh, that's too bad. Like many small towns, there are plenty of opinions. Many people didn't want to share them publicly. Justin Jeter did. You know, in a sense, it's a trust issue. Jeter is particularly bothered by the charges against Lund. He holds a very high standard for this town. He's a principal, and for a principal to do that, it's that's just uncalled for. We, you don't need people like that in that kind of position. Lund was placed on paid administrative leave on November 30th. That's the same day he was interviewed by police. Last week, the school board changed his status to unpaid leave. The other four educators on leave are still being paid, but the school board has a special meeting this Thursday to review that. If you'd like to read the criminal complaint against Lund, go to our website, fox11online.com, and click on the Special Assignment tab. There you'll also find a statement from the Anago School District and copies of the letters they sent home to parents. And if you have a story you'd like us to look into, email us at fox 11 on special assignment at wluk.com. Now, here's your forecast first from Fox 11 severe weather expert Patrick Powell. A couple of sprinkles popped up ahead of a little cool front that's moving eastward across northeastern Wisconsin. That is going to allow some slightly cooler weather to move in, but really still way above average for this time of the year. 34, 10 o'clock tonight, 27 tomorrow morning, and then 38 tomorrow afternoon. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow, but not quite as warm as today with the high today in the upper 40s, and it's still 42 severe weather index in the low category over the next 24 hours. Partly cloudy skies. Mild weather continues. Not quite as warm as today, but still very mild. Average high for today 25. We hit 47, falling just two degrees shy of the record 49 from 1993. And the average high this time of the year at 25 will still hit 38 tomorrow, 39 on Thursday, and 40 Friday before dropping back into the mid 30s over the upcoming weekend. Right now it's 42 at Green Bay, 45 in Appleton, 46 still in Oshkosh. 45 in Manitowoc and 43 in Green Bay, but that cool front is just sitting just out to our west and it is going to be moving through. Now, the latest from the Fox 11 Sports Center. Well, after a three game losing streak that stretched from New Year's Eve right on into January, Wisconsin basketball has righted the proverbial ship. The Badgers and their top ranked defense in all of college basketball back in the Big Ten picture with a huge week ahead. Now, Wisconsin, they've won five in a row, including a victory over then 16th ranked Indiana. Now, Saturday, the Badgers host Big Ten leading Ohio State, number three team in the country, huge game. But tonight it's at Penn State, the last place team in the conference. The Badgers, though, not worried about falling into a trap kind of game. You know, a lot of guys have the same mentality as me. Is we don't really know who we play next. Just we, you know, we don't really pay attention to the schedule until you know we play them next. So we've got Penn State on Tuesday, and it'll be good. And they have some guys back from last year who, uh, who obviously experienced that season they had last year. So I don't think it's a trap game. You know, we've talked about all year that the 12th ranked team or 12th best team in the league could beat the first best team. So we got to come ready to play every game. Taking a look at the Big Ten standings right now, Ohio State out front, but Wisconsin just a game back of the Buckeyes for comparison. The Nittany Lions just 2-7 and seven in conference play so far. Don't forget about Marquette either, Golden Eagles, in the middle of a six-game win streak of their own. They're second place in the Big East, doing pretty well. Nationally ranked, 15th overall. They try and make it seven wins in a row tonight against Seton Hall. They'll have to do it, however, without forward Devontae Gardner. He's out tonight with a knee sprain.